Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, Creative Living Band. Small but mighty. <laughs> Give them a hand. Woohoo, yeah. Just so I don't get asked 10 times after church, Jeremy is on vacation for the month of July. Uh, he, well, not really a vacation. He's actually um, out of town teaching. So he's multi-talented and sharing his gifts. We will miss him, but he'll be back not to worry, okay? And many, many kudos to the band for pulling it together and providing us some great music and doing a great job. Yeah. <laughs> kudos to all of our other volunteers who step up and serve this community in so many wonderful and miraculous ways. We are blessed by all of you. Let's give everybody a hand, all right? Yeah. So if you are watching this video clip um, online, I personally invite you to come and join us for an in-person service on Sundays, 10.30 a.m. at 2777 Racetrack Road, St. John's, Florida, 32259. You'll get to experience some amazing music, amazing energy, amazing fellowship, and we will look forward to welcoming you. God is good all the time. If you're just joining us, I like to say God is good. I like to hear you say all the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So did you hear about the frog that lost its car? Apparently it got towed. <laughs> What's weirder than seeing a cat fish watching a goldfish bowl? Where's my drummer? But up, up. <laughs> okay, how much do dead batteries cost? Nothing. They are free of charge. <laughs> okay, one more. I can't resist. Uh, do you know why you shouldn't tell pigs secrets? Because they always squeal. <laughs> God is good better than some of my jokes all the time. <laughs> all right, let's say our affirmation for today, please. Together, I release what doesn't serve my highest and best. I welcome new opportunities of good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great affirmation. In the Bible, in Romans chapter 12, it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. One of my favorite um, teachers, um, the Reverend Ed Rabel, I took a lot of classes with him going through ministerial school and licensed teacher training. And he said this quote, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He said it's a clear and direct statement about the interaction between our spiritual nature and our human experience. It, is really, it really defines our entire purpose as spiritual beings engaged in this human experience. We become conformed to this world when we allow illusions of separation, lack and limitation, to become the energy that motivates our choices and our actions in this world. We believe in the reports of our five senses rather than our spiritual guidance. We are transformed when in the midst of this human experience, we remember the truth of who we are, the Christ of God and allow that truth to shape our choices. That transformation can only happen when we truly believe in our innate oneness with God. When we realize that through our inner guidance, we can always discern what is the will of God. And with that, and trusting that discernment, to always bring about our highest and best good. Becoming transformed is the entire purpose of our human experience. 
Thank you, Ed Ravel. So old keys, they don't open new doors. It's another way of saying is letting go of the old to welcome the new. And I know it's not always as easy as it sounds. But when we let God lead the way, it's a lot easier. Remember from last week, God knows bike secrets? Yeah, yeah, keep pedaling, right? <laughs> In the Bible it says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. In other words, be still and connect with that Christ essence within you. There you will find rest for your soul and all the answers that you seek are already within you. There's an old saying, when one door closes, another one opens. Yeah. But there's a new perspective on that quote. It says, when one door closes, use the doorknob to open it again. <laughs> That's how doors work. <laughs> I thought, oh yeah. <laughs> so I'm look looking at paradigms today. So what is a paradigm? In simple terms, it's a pattern of thought, whether we're consciously aware of it or not, okay? Mental paradigms are deeply ingrained frameworks or patterns of thought that shape how we perceive and interpret and respond to the world around us. These paradigms are formed through a combination of cultural influences, personal experiences, education, and socialization. And while they help us make sense of complex information and navigate daily life, they can also limit our ability to see new possibilities or adapt to change. So here's kind of how sometimes mental paradigms can keep us stuck. Mental paradigms often lead to what's called confirmation bias. When we tend to seek out, uh, this is where when we tend to seek out, interpret, or remember information that confirms our pre-existing beliefs, then we ignore or dismiss the information that's coming in that contradicts what our paradigm believes, right? This reinforce, reinforces our current worldview and prevents us from considering alternative perspectives. Paradigms create a sense of stability and predictability. Changing them can be uncomfortable and unsettling, leading to resistance. Even when presented with evidence that challenges our paradigms, we might cling to those old beliefs because they're familiar and they're safe. So, <laughs> resistance is futile, says the Borg. <laughs> My trucky friends, friends are getting that. Um, mental paradigms can embed limiting beliefs about ourselves and our world. For example, if we have a paradigm that success is only achievable through hard work and struggle, we might overlook opportunities for easier and more enjoy enjoyable paths for success. Paradigms filter our perception of reality. Sometimes we misinterpret new information or experiences that don't fit into our established framework. This perpetual blindness keeps us from seeing new solutions or opportunities. It's similar to try, trying to open new doors with old keys. It doesn't work. So these paradigms, the mental paradigms, influence our behavior in ways that bring about usually the 
bring about outcomes that we expect, okay? For instance, if we believe we're not good at public speaking, we may avoid opportunities to practice and improve. We'll stay where it's comfortable and it's safe, even though these opportunities are coming up, right? It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Think you can, think you can't. Either way, you're right. So I'm not going to use their name, but I, I spoke with someone last week, and he shared with me that he had applied for a new position at his company. But then he went on to tell me the story of why he wouldn't get it. And I, I listened, and I, I invited him to let go of his story of the 101 reasons why he couldn't, he shouldn't, and he can't. Because he doesn't know that any of that is true. And I'm also aware that this person knows how the universe works. You state your desire, your request, I want this job. You hold the vision and you leave the rest to God. How it happens is none of your business. Stay out of it. Let God do what God does. If that job is the right job for you, the door will open. And sometimes in amazing and miraculous ways. Now, have you experienced that in your life in big and small ways? Yes, yes. And so did this person. So it was kind of like reminding him that, oh yeah, I've had a lot of that happening lately. I'm like, apply it here you know god is good all the time and uh, it's also similar to what unity teaches is the law of mind action our third basic principle thoughts held in mind reproduce after their kind okay and i've been working a lot i've been working a lot with bob proctor um uh, some of his work and um, it has really been bringing up this paradigm thing for me. And I'm like, whoa, this is tricky. This is tricky because a lot of them you don't even realize you have from like childhood and stuff. And that stuff's not serving me anymore. And it's like, whoa. So anyway, back to my friend. I realized about an hour later something happened. And I realized that lesson that I shared with my friend was not only for him, but it was for me too, because something popped up for me. I was like, oh, shoot, <laughs> I'm doing it too, you know, but I could see it. That's the difference. When you can see it, oh man, I grab hold of it and you are not getting loose until you bless me because this is not blessing me, right? And then I start doing what I can do, right, to shift it and to change it. And they're like slippery fish. If you let it go, it's going to be gone. And you're going to be like, yeah, what was that paradigm I got? I was thinking about that came up. For, I don't know. And yeah, it'll maybe come back for you again later. But I oh, mean, I grab hold of that slippery fish. It ain't getting away, right? So mental paradigms, these old patterns of thought we hold on to influence how we perceive and respond to the world around us. So how do we overcome these limiting mental paradigms? And it said this, like the first step is to become aware of them and recognize how they influence our thoughts and our actions, reflecting on our beliefs and questioning their origins. Actively challenge and test the assumptions underlying your paradigms. This involves seeking out diverse perspectives, engaging in critical thinking, and being open to new information. Actively challenge and test your paradigms. When you recognize them, test them. Be open to new information. Accept that change and uncertainty are parts of life. Embracing uncertainty can help us become more adaptive and open to new possibilities. Adopting a growth mindset where we view challenges as opportunities for learning and growth. We teach this in unity. 
When we view challenges as opportunities for learning and growth, it helps us to break free from limiting paradigms and develop more flexible ways of thinking. I am, I call myself a kind of a perpetual learner because I'm constantly wanting to learn more and more and grow and evolve and, and keep going and even taking classes I've taken before over again, reading books that I've read before over again because when I do that, I always get something more because I'm not the same person I was the first time I read the book or the first time I took the class. I have grown and I have evolved and I have, have made some strides in life and I've learned some hard lessons in life and lots of things have shifted and changed. And so when I pick up the book again or I take the course again, it's like I'm getting a higher level. Sometimes I'm like, you know, I like to highlight and write notes in my books and my workbooks and I'll take a class again and I'll be like, whoa, how come I, oh, I should have highlighted this whole page and there's nothing marked on this page, but now I get it, right? So there's all of this opportunity for learning and growing and evolving. And listening to Bob Proctor talk about paradigms was kind of blowing my mind. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And he talked about, and I haven't gotten the book yet, but I'm going to. He talked about Joel Barker, who is the author of a book called Paradigm, right? And he quoted him and said, to be able to change your future, you have to be willing and able to change your paradigm. Someone else said, change your thinking, change your life, right? Just keeping it simple. God is good all the time. So let's say our affirmation again. I release what doesn't serve my highest and best. I welcome new opportunities of good. Yes. So I invite you to just be open and receptive to what's going on in that mind of yours. Do you have paradigms that have blinders on that won't let you open up to new opportunities? Do you have blinders on that are keeping you stuck? Do you have stories that you're telling yourself of why it couldn't, it shouldn't, and it won't happen, whatever it is that you're desiring? All of these are things that we can catch, catch that slippery fish, and hold on to it and say, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. And then invite God to guide you and direct you in the way for you to go to heal that, to shift that, to change that. God is good. All the time. All the time. Yes. So I'm going to invite you to just, let's take all of that with us as we get, begin to move into meditation. I'm going to invite you to just get comfortable in your chair right where you are. Feel your feet on the floor. Relax your shoulders. And just be here now. I invite you to close your eyes if you'd like. And we're going to join in singing as I center in love. I align with God. As I center in love, I align with God. As I center in love, I align with God. As I center in love, I align with God, with God, with God. As I center in love, I align with God. As I center in love, I align with God. As I center in love, I align with God, with God, with God. God. 
God. As I center in love, I align with God. I invite you to let go of any outer distractions and focus within. And I invite, you, I invite you to allow my words to be the words of your own heart and mind as we share this brief time of prayer and meditation together. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I invite you to take a gentle breath in. Slowly release it. Breathing in, God is. Breathing out, I am. God is. I am. Thank you, God, for the many opportunities that I have to learn and grow, evolve, and serve. All of these things support my inner spiritual transformation, aligning me with you, God, and guiding me to my highest and best good. Thank you, God, in supporting me in shifting and changing the thought patterns and beliefs and old stories I tell myself that no longer serve me. I lift them up to you, God. I give them to you. To lighten and transform. and to lift me into a higher level of knowing. Knowing you, God, and knowing what is for my highest and best good. And being open and receptive to receiving and accepting the opportunities that come my way. I invite you to take another gentle breath in. Slowly release it. And go deeper within. And connect that sacred place of God within you. And I invite you to just rest there and listen for the still, small voice of God as God speaks just to you in the silence, in the silence.
Thank you, God. God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God walks beside me, guides my way through every moment of the day. I now am wise, I now am true, patient, kind, and loving too. All things I am can do and be through Christ, the truth that is in me. God is my health, I can't be sick. God is my strength, unfailing quick. God is my all, I know no fear, since God and love and truth are here. God is my wealth, I can't be poor. God is my true abundant store. His indwelling presence brings to me health, happiness, and prosperity. And we say thank you, sweet, sweet spirit. And so it is. Amen and amen. As I center in love, I align with God. As I center in love, I align with God. As I center in love, I align with God. Thank you, Creative Living Band. That was awesome. And thank you, Reverend Yvonne, for a constant reminder to turn that doorknob again. Like, <laughs> the door might yet open if we just try the knob. So thank you. That was awesome. We are in the flow, and we are so blessed. Now is our opportunity to give some of this flow to the ministry that has blessed us all. We will be passing around the baskets shortly, but there is also a QR code on the back of the chair in front of you. <laughs> you are welcome to use it, and it will take you to our secure website. Special thanks to those of you have, who have elected to do recurring donations. We are so grateful. This is your opportunity to tithe to UCCL in support of our ministry. It keeps the natural rhythm of giving and receiving flowing in all of our lives. So let's take our financial gift to heart and affirm our offertory blessing together. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have all that I give and all that I receive. And I am richly blessed. Thank you, God. Okay, guys, mark your calendars. We are ever bustling and having wonderful things going on. First things first, the Unity Fall Festival is happening on Saturday, October 5th. I do expect to see every single one of you in attendance. No pressure, just saying. <laughs> Vendor booths and food truck registration are now open. If you are interested in a booth or if you know someone who has a food truck, please pick up a packet in the lobby. Please spread the word by taking a few packets and sharing them with friends and local businesses that you may venture to. We also are offering sponsorships this year. If you have any questions, please see Helen in the lobby. 
join UCCL community for our lunch bunch after service on Sunday, July 28th. It's taking place at So Fresh. You can join Kelly and Ed Boardman for the Nature Connect event on Friday, July 26th at Itchney Ta Itchy Talkney's. Did I say that right? Listen, you guys. Itchney Talkney? It's up there. <laughs> it's it's Springs Float. So see Kelly Ed. Where's Kelly? She's in the back. See Ed. Ed, raise your hand. <laughs> For more details, join Bill Werfel for the Crystal Bowl Meditation on Wednesday, July 24th at 7 p.m. Allow the beautiful sounds and vibrations to wash through you, bringing deep peace and inner balance. The cost is only 20 bucks, so come out and treat yourself. Uh, the Women of Unity meet on Tuesday, July 16th at 6.30 p.m. All women are welcome to attend. Join Reverend Yvonne for Unity Basics on Sunday, July 14th from 12 to 2 p.m. This is a free event full of fun, interactive information about the foundations of unity. All are welcome. Join Ed in the Garden for Pomoculture Day on Saturday, July 13th at 9 a.m. Also, Ed is the guy for the service, okay? Join Ed. <laughs> for the men's group that is taking place on July 9th at 7 p.m. at his home. Okay, now I invite everyone to stand and say the prayer of protection with me as an I am statement. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. And the presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. And together, wherever we are, God is. And all is well. Yay, God!